the native First Nation peoples of North America were not black Africans. A controversial title, I know. In other words, Columbus, Christopher Columbus, did not meet people with African phenotype when he arrived. Let's get into it. David Roots TV. There was a guy from Spain. Christopher Columbus was his name. Down in the West Indies is where he gained this fame. A lot of black people went down the train. Okay, greetings family. Dr. David Roots coming with another teaching, uh, another video, another presentation. Okay, this one we need to move quick so that we can make sure we get through all of the information because there's a lot of information to present to make sure we cover it uh, properly. So the title of this presentation is The Native First Nation People aka the Indians, what people call the Indians of North America, were not black Africans, okay? In other words, Columbus did not meet people with African phenotype when he arrived. Because we have to talk about this. Why? I put three reasons, three reasons down why we have to talk about this. But before we even get into the three, the three reasons, there's this myth and this idea that when Columbus, Christopher Columbus, came to the so-called Americas, uh, that he met African people, he met black people, okay? And I put African in quotes because the people, many of the people that are claiming this have what we all would consider African Afrocoid phenotypes. So those are the, the phenotypes, the physical features that you'll see amongst people in Africa and then you'll see carried over to the people, black people that live in the USA. And I did quote because as most people will know, there is no one such thing as Afrocoid or an African phenotype. However, we do know that when it comes to the term black Africans, we are referring to the phenotype of Sub-Saharan Africa. And Sub-Saharan Africans, whether we like it or not, have a specific phenotype that is unique to Sub-Saharan Africans. So, there are many black people in America who like to hold on to this myth that when Columbus came, he met people that looked like them, okay? And I'm going to dispel this myth and dispel also this myth that the native First Nation people of North America who might have been copper colored, yes, some of them, but they were not black Africans. They did not look like sub-Saharan Africans. And the reason why we have to talk about this is the reasons I list, list down below that you have many people on social media, people like Dane Calloway, who I don't know. I listen to his videos, very interesting. And uh, Queen Chief Warhouse Alwyn Green. Okay, you can go and look these people up. But in many ways, they are misleading people with these claims that are saying that black people in the USA are exclusively native Indian heritage or of native Indian heritage. 
when when you look at people like Dane Calloway, when you look at people like Alwyn Green, okay, they don't have native Indian First Nation people phenotype. They have sub-Saharan African phenotype, okay, and they have put they put forth lots of reasons like this, but they want to try to state that when Columbus arrived, that there were people that looked like them on the continents that we now call America, which there's not a name I like to use, on Turtle Island, as some people would say, uh, in South America, so on and so on. And we're going to get into all of that. So, there's some truth to it and there's a lot more myth to it. So we need to dispel the myth so that we can accept the truth. Okay? Number two. So that was number one. Number two. Yes, some black people, even myself, may have some genetics, some DNA of First Nation people, of native First Nation people, but the majority of the DNA that you see in black so-called African Americans or black people in, in America, including the black people that are in Brazil and in the West Indies, are of African descent, including those in Central America, places like Panama and Colombia and South America as I said like Brazil okay Ecuador they are African descent yes they might have some native descent to them but the phenotypes that you see are of African phenotypes specifically sub-Saharan African okay so we're going to dispel those myths being put forth by some people and as I said I'm going to support those guys research in some ways because I'm going to talk about the, the undeniable proof that yes in pre-Columbian America there was an African presence separate from the native First Nation presence separate from the native Mayan and Inca presence who had melanated phenotype but there was also a separate African, sub-Saharan African presence there also, okay, which then, uh, you know, helps to clarify this huge myth that people, like I said, like Dane Calloway and Queen Chief Warhouse, Alwyn Green, and people are holding on to, like, the rapper Waka Flocka who said, it's, it's online, you can read about it, where he says, he's not black. He comes from a tribe, uh, but he is not. He doesn't call himself black, which is fine. I understand what what he's saying, but in many ways, he's saying that he's not African. He doesn't have any African ancestry. All of his ancestry is native, which is clearly not true when you look at his phenotype. And we're going to explore all of that today. So, as I said, we have to move very quick. David Roots TV. Okay, we do research. We go deep within and we provide evidence. That's what this is all about. Not myths, not conjecture, not anecdotal information. So let's move on quickly. So this video is my first video that I'm, I'm, I'm livicating, as we'd say, to someone. Uh, in this particular case, it's to a professor of mine when I went to Hampton University. This man may have meant a lot to me. I studied marine and environmental science at Hampton University, which is in Virginia in the USA. And um, he was the director of basically diving. Okay, So as a marine scientist, we had to take courses and classes in things like diving and lifeguarding. And Mr. Errol Duplassus uh, was my instructor at the time. So this man was a very important uh, person in not just my life but in the life of many young black people who wanted to learn about how to dive, how to scuba dive as well as people outside the university because he ran his own company that was devoted to teaching black people how to dive. If anybody knows about scuba diving it's very much a whitewashed activity it's very difficult for black people to get entry into it, especially you know if you're talking about 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. 
and he was one of those people to break those barriers and he transitioned this year I was very sad to learn um, so I say to him to brother and, and father Errol Duplassus to rise in power as you're now in the in the ancestral realm so I this video I dedicate and I livocate to him now the reason why I dedicate and livocate this video to him is because uh, let me just pause the video a minute So I, I dedicate and I livocate, I should say, this video to, this teaching to the father of diving, of black diving, one of the fathers of black diving in the US, Mr. Errol Duplassus. Now there's a reason why I do this, is because during our dive, diving instruction, we did not just spend time at the university, at Hampton University, which is in Virginia, he took us to places like Florida, to the Bahamas, to Bimini, to dive. And one of the dives that we did was on the Henrietta Marie, which was uh, a the wreckage of a slave ship called the Henry, Henrietta Marie, which went down in a storm off of the Bahamas, between Bahamas and Florida. And he took us down there as young black students, university students who were learning to dive, to dive on this. And it was an unforgettable for, forgettable experience that we uh, we got to visit the museums that highlighted a lot of the the, uh, the items that were found on a slave ship because this narrative of the fact the people saying that in the USA black Americans are not actually from Africa that they are Native American and that slavery didn't exist they go hand in hand the people many of the people that are promoting this not only say that that they are Native Americans and they have no African ancestry, but they also dispute the fact that slavery exists. So when you actually, like myself, who's physically been and dived on physical evidence like the Henrietta Marie and seen the artifacts, I visited uh, Cape Coast in, in, in Ghana and I visited Almina Slave Castle in Ghana, and you can see the, the connections between the two, then that's why it's important for me to do videos like this to give actual myths, sorry, actual facts that can help to dispel a lot of the myths that people out there are, are, are putting uh, who haven't had the opportunity to do things like this. And so I give real thanks to uh, Father Errol de Plusses for giving myself and many of us the opportunity okay where we dove on the Henrietta Marie uh, a slave ship that was found you can go online and read a lot more about it okay so let's keep moving on so here's Dane Calloway this is his website uh, this is just a screenshot and if you notice down the bottom he has a title for this particular blog article that he's written on his website August 28 2016 and from them he, he blew up a lot after that where he says that 98% of African Americans are in fact native Indians uh, and are owed millions. Okay, so that's his bull claim and, and that's kind of the foundation of where he's come uh, with his information after that. That's what he's most well known for, for disputing the idea that black Americans are in fact African and putting a lot of the ancestry into the native Indian, to the native First Nation basket, okay? And if you look at Dane Calloway, you can clearly see that he has sub-Saharan African features. He doesn't promote things like DNA testing because he says they're fraudulent and they don't mean this and they don't mean that, despite it being the foundation of biological sciences and criminological sciences, forensic science right now. Um, so we're going to look at some of the information that might inform against this argument that Dane Calloway had, is speaking about. And it's not just him because other blogs are picking it up. This is on Lipstick Alley. Um, I put the, 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 
the address there where you can see other blogs are picking up these discussions and people are running with it having done no research of their own even minor research and it's dangerous because what it does is it takes away the connection to the vast history legacy and glorious uh, traditions of African people that people in the West like myself like yourself if you are of African descent can be connected to by trying to claim yourself as a native Indian solely possibly just for economic purposes and a lot of this is connected to the whole uh, sovereign movement and uh, you know more citizenship movement and so on and so on okay so we need to address this and we're going to do that right now you also have people like Queen Chief Warhorse who you can look at and see she also has sub-Saharan African phenotypes she also doesn't talk about genealogy she claims that she is a member of the Chata or Choctaw or as we would know tribe okay which very importantly that particular tribe of First Nation people occupy the places where we're talking about modern-day Alabama Florida Mississippi and Louisiana so we're going to look at the people who were found in those places of the uh, of those particular tribes and the groups of tribes that go along with them and um, like the Creek Nation and people like that and we're going to put a test to the claims that people like her are of native ancestry and that's it okay so let's keep going so here's a video that she uh, appears appears on so it's worth listening to the video and listening to how she responds to someone who like myself is questioning her on this particular issue okay so let's listen up We appreciate you watching. We want to know what your question or comment happens to be. Caller? Yeah, Brother Warren? Yes. Yeah, this is Brother Warren. Yeah, I, I hey, it's good to hear from you. That uh, I don't want to be rude or disrespectful, but I, I kind of come from the position you grew up in in the Gadigalia era. Uh, I identify as an African American, I identify with my African ancestry. Uh, when I hear my relatives who do genealogy, talk about a Native American past, I'm not interested because I feel that a lot of these things are still attempts on our part to escape our African heritage. Mm -hmm. Even if it were the case of Native American ancestry, I am black because I am African, not because I'm Native American. And the institutions, the African American family, the church, the civic social organization we developed saved my life and many other black folk life. And so I, people have the right to, to identify whatever they want, but I feel that this discussion among our people tends to get us off track as to our reality that we deal with in the world and that we are oppressed because we are an African people. Yep. So, you can see this video is coming from the perspective by the title of people that want to promote the, the uh, mindset and the statements of the Chief Alwyn Warhorse Gillum. Uh, but the, the gentleman caller, he makes a very important point how he's talking about the fact that when people want to claim Native American ancestry and disconnect from any African ancestry, they disconnect themselves from the very things that have basically rescued us and allowed us to survive through the, through, through the oppression that our black African ancestors had to endure over centuries. Okay, he makes a very good point about that and how that the reason he that reason we are black is not because of the native side that some people may have and I'm gonna 
I'm going to test that out with actual science, but it's due to our African ancestry and the phenotypes that we see within us, such as what you see within the lady herself, Chief Alwyn Gillum, such as what you see within Dane Calloway, are uniquely African. So listen to how she responds so we can dissect that. I want you to respond to it. Brother, I would like to say this to you. I'm not trying to change anyone's belief. A lot of the calls I get from around the country, I address some of the calls like you were just saying. I'm not trying to change your belief or your race, but I am saying for the last several hundred years, you've been on my land here. And what I am saying, be at least a little appreciative that when the, 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 the slaves were running from their slave masters, we opened our doors and villages for you to be here today. So immediately she starts to say that what he feels, what he's stating is just a belief, okay? So his phenotype and his ancestry is just a belief and that what, and that she then separates herself and says that people like him, people like myself who have ancestry, African ancestry should be thankful to people like herself and her ancestors. So she's separating the two. So she's basically saying that she doesn't have any African ancestry or especially any enslaved African ancestry and that we should be thankful to her people okay so this is the danger in what she's saying and let's let's continue to listen so we can dispel a lot of the different things that she's saying to tell me you from Africa so you know thank somebody from giving up everything they had because we believed in God, and we feared God, and we opened up our doors and villages, we fed your people. We took care of your people. Same thing I would tell the Europeans when they ask me, what are you worried about? Where are the people you based your Thanksgiving off of? We gave you everything and you gave us death. You gave us bloody tra uh, um, trails of tears. Well, okay, African American have even given us a bloody trail of tears. You know what I get from my African brothers and sisters? That we opened our doors and gave to them life? You know what they say? Why are you worried? She said that they, the Native Americans, gave the Africans who have, you know, <laughs> it's just it's almost hilarious, to be honest. So the, the African uh, uh, pantheon of cultures and traditions which stem from the Nile Valley to uh, the ancient South Africa to the glorious nations of, of Mali and Timbuktu, University of Sankore, so on and so on. We haven't even talked about, you know, places like uh, 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 Babylon and, and Sumeria. And she's saying that, that it's the Native Americans that are, have given that life. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. And the way that she's separating herself from it is even more ridiculous. The way that she doesn't even mention the, the, the role that Native Americans play in slavery, which the caller does later, and you'll see how, how she responds to it. Native Americans themselves held African slaves. So it wasn't all this nicey, nicey, oh, we're going to rescue the, you know, our black brothers and sisters as Native Americans, as First Nation people. No, Native Americans held slaves of their own. Okay, so we're going to listen up. I heard about that. Now you ought to embrace being of Africa. Well, I've been here for thousands of years. Now, brother, for me to go to Africa and tell Africa I'm a Native American, I have done, met with a lot of friends in Africa. They accept me as chief of this nation. India accept me as chief of my nation. Uh, other countries do. Why can't my brothers and sisters of Africa here be more graceful and, and help us the way we help you all. Warren? Well, I disagree with her his historic interpretation of Native Americans being saviors of those 12 million souls from Africa who were brought here who saved this land, this Louisiana colony. So you can see this caller is quite well informed. He knows what he's talking about and he says he disputes her historical interpretation. Okay? Was saved by the Africans from growing rights and the Native Americans participated with the Europeans in capturing Africa who were brought here, who saved this land. This Louisiana colony was saved by the Africans from growing rights. And the Native Americans participated with the Europeans in capturing Africans as slaves, and also using them in the slave trade. 
And I did this really kind of historical interpretation on the record. I identified those 12 million Africans who were bought here and had the strongest soul and refused not to die. All right, Warren. Hold, before, I'm going I'm to let uh, Roger, he wants to handle up on you in a minute. But I want to invite you, uh, we ought to sit down here and just have an open debate one day. I'd like to you know to book that up so you think about it i'll call you and see if we cannot schedule uh, all right, brother. so you can see how they've cut him off because this brother clearly knows what he's talking about and and even the way he mentioned louisiana which we're going to talk about uh in a minute uh where he's showing that he knows that america before the way america is structured now was not a homogenous uh, uh geography it was made up of three separate Holdings you had the British holdings you had the French holding and you had the Spanish holding and the native people Were separate between all of that But each one of those holdings had African people that were being that had been imported as enslaved people so in, in particular the Spanish and the Louisiana holdings but the way she's presenting her information as as it's as if there was this homogenous America with these Native American people that all look the same, that look like her, and that they all came together and helped the, the black man that was enslaved, which is absolutely historically inaccurate and is incorrect. And we're going to talk about it uh, during this video. So let's listen to how they finish up with, with dealing with his statements, okay, which were on point. But let's see if they give any evidence like he did. Okay, Brother Roger. But the first thing I want to say that we all are one people. There he goes with the all are one people now, okay? With whatever that means, is that some sort of historical or, or, or genealogical fact? I mean, <laughs> let's, let's keep going. Now, we might be subdivided into different names under Australians, uh, Libyans, Puerto Ricans. Puerto Ricans, Haitians, whatever. We all still one people. If we, if we say that we are Shanta and we are Native Americans and we've been here on this land, that's who we are. Now, I can give you a brief history. This is absolutely ridiculous. So just by someone saying, okay, yes, I was this and that's who I am, without having any specific historical, specific genealogical, specific DNA, specific, uh, you know, artifacts, anything to back it up, that gives you the right to just say, okay, I am this, but I am not that. It's absolutely ridiculous because there is, yes, a belt of Africoid people across the earth from China, India, Africa to what we're going to find also in Central America. But they are all different groups of people. And the Sub-Saharan uh, Africans who were brought to the America were very different for example, and are very different than the Aborigines of Australia, than the, the brothers and sisters in Papua New Guinea, than the East Africans and so on and so on. And including the way this brother looks, which is clearly Sub-Saharan African. On how the West Africans uh, came over on a boat to uh, South America and set up civilization. And it's been documented that the, the, the stone heads are still down in La Venta, down in uh, South America. Those, uh, they call them Omex. The Omex mix with uh, some of the Chinese invaders that were coming in through the Barren Strait. And we mixed together and we, we made what is called the so-called Native American now, which is the Red Man. That's right. Good. So then he starts to talk about the Omex. And he starts to say about how it's the OMAC mixing with the with the uh, with the the Africans that came over into the the um, into South America, and they are what made the Native American people. Now, America is a is a vast continent. You have South America, you have North America, you have Central America. The the OMAC are in Central south central america or sorry in central america like for example in, in what we call lower mexico so the omac are totally different people than the native tribes that would have been in the north america along the 
Atlantic Ocean, in Canada, along the Louisiana, uh, 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 up, up in Louisiana, the Louisiana Purchase, along California, they would have been totally different phenotypes. So for him to just say, try to group them all together, okay, and as a, as a reason for saying that, you, that everyone's going to look the same, everyone is going to be the same, is absolutely ridiculous. So we're going to move on from the video. And this is why doing this presentation is important because a lot of the, the information that people are giving uh, is inaccurate. Okay, good. So let's look first at Christopher Columbus because that's why, where one of these big myths come from. You know, black people, African people in the West, because the history and the culture and the names and the identity have been stolen, as a result, much of what we do at times is make up things and hold on to things to be able to grasp a sense of pride. And what we need to do is rather than just grasp at straws, we need, really need to look at the evidence so that we can that the truth of what we need what we have there to hold on to is actually much more powerful than the little straws that we think we might need to hold on to so there's this myth that you keep hearing about that when christopher columbus came he saw black people okay so we're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about what he saw from his own words christopher columbus his first journey was in 1492 most people know that and this is a map he actually came to America to the Americas four different times okay but it was in his first journey that we're going to look at and we're going to look at who he saw as some evidence for what the Native American people that were in that area looked like okay and how can we do that well we can read his journal his journal is freely available online I put the link down below okay and it's been translated of course it wasn't written in English it's been translated into English and this particular uh, part of his this translation talks about all of the different translation and, and how it was translated and where it actually came from so let's look at his journal we're gonna look at page 111 where it talks about uh, him I've skipped to his journal of his first voyage and how what he saw when he first started to see people because he saw land and he saw different sites of land before he actually saw people. So let's just read. And I've used these red boxes to help give us an idea of um, where we need to read from as a signpost for me. So it says, uh, it appeared to me to be a race of people, very poor and everything. Okay, so this is people that he saw on the beach. All right. They go as naked as when their mothers bore them. And so do the women. Although I did not see more than one young girl, all I saw were youths, none more than 30 years of age. They are very well made, with very handsome bodies and very good countenances. So meaning they were fit, basically he's saying they were fit, they weren't fat and stuff like that, they were fit people. Because remember he's a European, he's come from Europe, and Europe is in the, is in the healthiest of places. That's why they're trying to do trade, and so he's seeing these young, fit, young people, okay? So listen to what he says, what they look like. He says, their hair is short and coarse. Okay, short and coarse. So what does he mean by that? He says, almost like the hairs of a horse's tail. Okay, we all know what horses look like. We all know what the tails look like. Okay, and he says that the hairs are, are like the hairs of a horse's tail. They wear the hairs brought down to the eyebrows except a few locks behind, which they wear long and never cut. They paint themselves black, and they are the color of the Canarians. He says, neither black nor white. Okay, so these are the people, this is before the Europeans in Christopher Columbus has arrived. And these are the people that he's seeing in Hispaniola, in that part of the Caribbean that we now call Haiti, Dominican Republic. This is the people he saw. They had hair that was like horse's hair, like a horse's tail, okay? So clearly that's not sub-Saharan African, okay? It's like straw. And they were the hairs brought down to the eyebrows, okay? So that means the hair had to fall like this, 
it wasn't curly it had to fall down like that okay we stay another cut um, a few lights behind we stay another cut they paint themselves black but he says importantly that they were the color of the Canarians meaning the Canary Islands off of the coast of of North Africa neither black nor white now this is a very important point so we're going to keep going remember I'm trying to address people like this lady here okay look at her phenotype like the man that was in the video all right where they are claiming that they are basically solely Native American First Nation people okay and Christopher Columbus is telling us of the people that he saw when he arrived on America so this here is the Canary Islands I put a circle around it you can see Morocco and Algeria Spain and Portugal so this is basically North Africa and this is Canary Islands and so during that time Columbus and sorry the Spanish and the Portuguese had already visited and done lots of lots of uh, explorations particularly the Portuguese in Africa in North Africa in particular and I'm going to provide evidence for for that later okay so they know what sub-saharan african people look like they know what europeans look like and he clearly said that they were the color of the canarians they were neither black nor white he could have said hey they were like the africans or they were like the sub-saharan africa he wouldn't have used the word africa but he might have said they were like the, the guineans or whatever he would have said the nigers or you know something like that but he clearly didn't he said they were like the canarians so which canarians is he talking about okay so if you look here here is this is from wikipedia about the canarians okay it's this here in red says although the prehistory of the settlement of the canary islands is still unclear linguistic and genetic analysis seems to indicate that at least some of these inhabitants shared a common origin with the berbers on the nearby north african coast okay the pre-colonial inhabitants came to be known collectively as the Guanches or Gonches, although Gonches had been the name for only the indigenous inhabitants of Tenerife. Okay, so the people that were there before colonization were known as the Guanches. Okay, so Columbus said they looked like the Canarians. So these people that were there that were there before the the colonization let's see what they look like all right from the 14th century onward numer numerous visits were made by sailors from Mallorca Portugal and Genoa so from the fourth, 14th century those would have been because remember Columbus discovered America in 1492 so the people that would have been in the Canary Islands would have been those types of people that those sailors who were visiting uh, the Canary Islands from Mallorca, Portugal and Genoa would have seen and as as it says that they probably obviously would have been mixing the, the native indigenous Guanches would have been mixing with the people that were visiting so what did they look like so that we can know what Columbus was referring to when he said they look like Canary Islands so let's quickly look at this picture down here it says here Alonso Ferdinand de Lugo Present, presenting the captured native Guanche kings of Tenerife okay and you can clearly look at these people here these are the kings that were captured okay they are clearly not sub-saharan African in phenotype all right they are not sub-saharan -Sub African in phenotype and this was here let's see <clears throat> around 1478 to 1496 yeah so by the time that Columbus had sailed to America the people of the Canary Islands because some people will say oh they were Berber so they they would look you know they would look like uh, 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 North Africans they would have been dark skinned and so on and so on however that wouldn't have been the people that Columbus would have seen or recognized as Canary Islands Canary Island Canarians okay the people that he would have seen as he said clearly in his own words 
were neither black nor white okay meaning they were mixed okay good so remember I am not saying that there were not melanated people and I'm gonna talk about this what I am disputing is this idea that people like uh, uh, Dane Calloway and like Chief Warhorse, Queen Chief Warhorse, are stating that 98% of African Americans have native ancestry and that the, the native people look like them. And it's ridiculous. And I'm going to show you proof. And I've given some first, first part of the proof based off of Christopher Columbus. But let's keep going. Okay. And I put a picture of those Guanche people here. You can see their hair. You can see the color of their skin. This isn't a this isn't a recreated drawing. This is a drawing from that time. It's sort of like a a, a, a reanimation of of the scene at that time. You can see another king, one of the captured king kings over there, and that's what Columbus was stating that the people kind of looked like, neither black nor white. Okay, good. So like what we might call the the uh, you know some of the Portuguese and Spanish today who have mixed heritage. So let's go on, okay? Because some people might say that the, the Canarians that what Columbus was saying, you know, were had Africoid features and that when he saw those people, it might have he might have been referring to the Berbers, you know, the Berber people who had had very Africoid features okay so let's deal with that now you need to understand that somebody like Christopher Columbus who was a uh, a very well connected uh, mercant, mercant, uh, very well connected uh, aristocrat a very well connected um, what's the word I'm looking for uh, mercantile shipman okay he was a commercial shipman he would have known many things, especially being a seaman. Okay, one of the things that that Columbus and the Spanish and the Italians and the Portuguese would have already known about were the Moors. Okay, and by that time in 1492, the Moors, the 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 the, the high time of the Moors had already passed. Okay. So let's look at some evidence here. So the Moors of Iberia, which is what we now call Portugal and Spain and that peninsula there. And it says here, the Moors of Iberia, 739, the Maghreb fell into civil war in 739 that lasted until 743, known as the Berber Revolt. Okay, this is 700 years before Columbus. Okay, so the Moors were already in Iberia during that time. It says, despite racial tensions, Arabs and Berbers intermarried frequently. Okay, so already there you have the mixing, the racial tensions between the, the dark-skinned Arabs and the Berbers, who were more mixed. They were often intermarried frequently. All right. Now, when you look down here, it says the Moors ruled Northern Africa for several centuries thereafter. And this, this person here, Ibn Hazim, the polymath mentions that many of the caliphs in the Umayyad Caliphate and the Caliphate of Cordoba, all of these were in Spain and in Iberia, were blonde and had light eyes. Okay, so when Columbus is referring to the Castilian, sorry, to the to the uh, um, Canary Islanders, all right, he wasn't referring to the pre dark skin Moors. Okay? So because some people might try to claim that. Because he if he needed to, if he wanted to, he knew what sub sub Saharan people looked like. He knew what sub Saharan African people looked like. He knew what the people that are in Africa that are in America today, in the USA today he knew what people, those people look like and where they came from, okay? Because look, it says here that, down the bottom here, 
It says, though the number of Moorish colonists were small, many native Iberian inhabitants converted to Islam. By 1000, according to Ronald Sego, some 5 million of Iberia's 7 million inhabitants, most of them descended from indigenous Iberian converts were Muslim. There were also sub-Saharan Africans who had been absorbed into Al Angeles to be used as soldiers and slaves. This is just 1000. Columbus is coming in 1492, okay, 400 years later. My point in all of this is that if Columbus, Columbus knew what dark-skinned African people looked like, and if dark-skinned African people were the first people he saw, he would have said so. He wouldn't have said that the hair was like straw, sorry, like horses hair, and that the hair was coarse, and that they were neither black nor white. If, if, they, if they looked like me or you, if they looked like even more so, you know, dark-skinned like Dane Calloway or, or, or uh, Chief Warhorse, he would have said so because he would have been very used to what dark-skinned sub-Saharan Africans look like. Okay, so let's keep going on. All right. So just to drive home the point, all right, it's that same passage, but if you look down the bottom here, it says the Berber and sub-Saharan African soldiers, it disconnects the two, the Berber and sub-Saharan African soldier, soldiers, were known as Tangerines because they were important to Tangier. So Tangier is what we now call basically Morocco, all right? So, and they were imported into Iberia. So you had the Berbers who were in that area, who were the ones that would have been similar to Canary Islands, and you had the sub-Saharan Africans who were also in that area, but who were coming up from, so they were the dark-skinned dark skin African people, okay? So Columbus would have been very, very familiar with many phenotypes, but he chose to say they looked like the Canary, Canary Islands, who were Berber in, in phenotype, okay? And they did not look sub-Saharan African. And we know that when you travel to the USA today, in the US, the people of the United States of Africa have African, sub-Saharan African phenotype. And you can see in this picture here, this Moorish army, which is a mixture between the Berbers and the sub-Saharan African. There's a gentleman here who has the sub-Saharan African features of the curly hair, okay? coarse, short grain here, and dark phenotype. And that's not what Columbus saw. But let's keep going, because that's we need more evidence. All right? Now, this was just more evidence to show that the Portuguese, and by extension the Spanish, they were in Africa long before 1492. Okay, so it says here that Senegal and Cape Verde were reached in 1445 by the Portuguese. 1446, uh, a Portuguese pushed on almost as far as present-day Sierra Leone, and the Gulf of Guinea was reached in 1460s. 1469, so on and so on. All of this was occurring before 1492. Again, if Columbus, he knew what Sub-Saharan Africans looked like, okay, and if that's who he saw, he would have said so in his journals. All right. So how about his other journeys? What people did he see? Because there's, there's this myth. Columbus never came to America, to North America. Okay. He never set foot on North America. And that's another myth that we have to dispel. Okay. He did not see black people so-called African people, which I just talked about, and he didn't even set foot on North America to see those people, okay? But what other evidence can we glean from, from, from his, his journeys, okay? So let's look now at Juan Ponce de Leon. Who was he? Well, he came to America as a gentleman volunteer with Christopher Columbus on his second expedition in 1493. Now, Juan Ponce de, Ponce de Leon, Ponce de, de Leon, he actually did set foot or, or get to the what we now call as North America, um, and specifically in Florida. Okay, and this is where people like Chief Warhorse, uh, 
Alwyn Gillum is saying that her family was coming from from the those tribes along the uh, southern Gulf Coast of America and Florida and and the Gulf of uh, of Mexico and those sorts of areas. This is where Ponce de, de, de Leon would have started to explore. So let's take a listen. Sorry, let's take a look and to see what he saw. All right. So it says in 1521. Ponce de Leon finally returned to Southwest Florida with the first large scale attempt to establish a Spanish colony in what is now the continental United States. However, the native Calusa people fiercely resisted the incursion. So there it gives us an idea of the people that were actually in that region that these people are claiming to have full genetic ancestry of because remember how she addressed the caller she said to the caller it was her and her people that gave you know sanction and gave refuge to the Africans clearly separating herself from the African people that would arrive during uh, during slavery time okay so let's look at the Calusa people all right now you see when you see images like this all right this one I put the link there Florida Florida's lost tribes because along those regions regions you had many different types of people many different nations of people okay of what we might call Indian people the Calusa being one of them all right but Ponce de, de Leon as well as Columbus neither of them left any drawings there's no authentic drawings any drawings and things you see from people during those times are mock-ups they are you know artists impressions okay however when you look at this particular artist impression and we're going to look at why his stuff might be valid you can see that all of the people here while they might be some of them may be brown as we said they are neither black nor white that's what Columbus said you can see that none of them have Afrocoid typical what we might call Afrocoid black features okay now this particular gentleman um, Theodore Morris he says in his work and this is a larger poster that he's done where he shows the Calusa people that we just mentioned that Ponce de Leon would have seen all right so this is we're trying to find out what the people would have looked like in these areas he says that under this passage I just put it in yellow so you can read it he would like to thank all the archaeologists and historians that have spent countless hours critiquing his work and providing we, him with many important and helpful drawings and photographs so while his stuff might be mock-ups it might be just artist impressions of what the native people of North America might have looked like he has undergone lots of peer review and lots of scrutiny to ensure that it's some act it's sort of an accurate picture of what might the people might have looked at looked like during that time and as you can clearly see none of them look like Dane Calloway none of them look like Chief Chief uh, Warhorse Gillum none of them have what we would call Afrikoi native sub-Saharan African features like those Africans that would be brought to those shores so for her to claim that and Dane Calloway to claim that 98% of African Americans who don't look like this are in fact native Indians again is more myth and is not supported by the facts as we have presented okay good so we talked about Ponce de Leon who came with Christopher Columbus and he said that he talked about the Calusa people and I just showed you a artist mock-up of what the Calusa people would look like and showed you how this particular artist has been critiqued by many archaeologists and historians and that they don't bear any resemblance to what we would traditionally call the sub-Saharan African people that the people of the United States black people look like 
he wasn't the only one that gave uh, uh, an idea of the native people of the Americas. You also had G. Girolamo Benzoni. Girolamo, Girolamo, Girolamo Benzoni. Okay. So who was Girolamo Benzoni? So Girolamo Benzoni in 1541. Okay. So 1492 is Columbus, 1541. So we're talking about 10. So about 50 years later, at 22, he traveled from Italy to Spain and then into the New World. Okay, this man. Um, he claims to have been seeking adventure and fortune. He spent 15 years in the territories, conquered and being exploited by the Spaniards. So he traveled to these places like Central America, South America, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Mexico, Panama, Peru, Venezuela. Okay, so he's traveling to these places that are uh, people that the Native Americans will be in. Okay, now why is he important? Well, he's important because he published a work called Historia del Mundo Nuevo, so History of the New World. And in his work, he presents uh, information on the vile treatment of the native people by the Spanish and the, the, the colonizing uh, powers of those native people and the torch and the different things that they were going through. Now, you will see on the internet pictures that look like this that are based off of Girolamo Benzoni's book. But again, when you look, his book is actually available online. When you look at the text of his book, there are no images in his book. All of these are engravings, um, uh, uh, linotypes, which is a specific way of doing a type of, uh, of, of, of art, are just artist conception. Again, they are just artist conception. So we cannot use any of these pictures as a method of deciding what the native people look like during the time of when Girolamo Benzoni was roaming uh, that those parts of the Americas. <clears throat> so what I'm trying to say by telling you this is that, is that a lot of these imageries that people present, you need to know that most of them are just artists conception based off of movies, based off of different things, not movies in, 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 um, in this case, obviously, because there's no movies when they were doing these artists' conception, but they're not based off of actual imagery that people would have been able to look at. But there are some, okay? There are some that were based off of, of, of imagery, okay? So let's get on to that. Um, So, this, in, in Wikipedia, talks about Girolamo Benzoni, and there's some critique of his book because they were saying that his book really was just, some people say that it's just a, a plagiarized version of another account of this person, Bartolomeu de, la, de las Casas, who was a monk who went down to Mexico and to Peru, and um, he also wrote an account of how the Native American people were being treated. So people are saying that Benzoni's book is just, you know, a plagiarized version of that. And again, pictures have come out that are associated with Bartolomeu de la Casa's book. Again, these are just artist conception. So you cannot get an idea because clearly you can see here, these are supposed to be the Native American people. This is not what the Native American people would have looked like. That's not what, um, you know, they just clearly look like Europeans. So these are just Europeans who are trying to, what's this, 1528. There's a European who's read the, the information from the book and has tried to create like some sort of um, imagery of it, not actually having traveled there himself. So we can look though at some actual pictures okay, of people who were in North America during as early times as possible, okay. So for example, this painting in 1805 
of Benjamin Hawkins on his plantation instructing Mosaki Creek. So Creek is a First Nation people in European technology. So this is an actual painting of someone that's done in, in 1805. And you can see what the, the Creek First Nation people look like. Okay, so this would be a Creek man here. These are, this would be a Creek woman. And you can see that they don't have, again, Sub-Saharan African features. So this is in 1805. This is 300 years, obviously, sorry, 1492, so about 200 years after Columbus. People are gonna say, wow, that's when there had so much mixing going on and so on and so on. The reality is, is that you might have had some mixing going on, but this is what the Creek people would have looked like during that time. Because during that time, you also would have had enslaved Africans there and they wouldn't have looked like this. So you had two separate sets of people. You had the, some of the First Nation people and you had African people. And we know what people like Dane Calloway and people like Chief Warhorse Gillum look like. They look like the Sub-Saharan African people, not like the Muskegee Creek. And the Muskegee are a, a range of different tribes that were in a specific area, including the Choctaw uh, Nation as well, who Chief Gillum claims to have ancestry from. Okay, but that's 1805, but we can get a bit older. We can look here. Um, sorry, we can, we, can get a, we can find another imagery. We can look here. This one's 1847. This, pain, this painter, he was an American Canadian artist who was born in Paris, France. He was known as a painter and photographer. So here, this is 1847. He's painting a picture of Louisiana Indians walking along a bayou. So these were native people that he would have seen and he would have painted the imagery. He's an excellent painter. And we can, again, we can see that, and these remember what we said in the beginning, if I go back to the beginning here, when we look at the Choctaw tribe, the Chata tribe, as she, she calls it, where were they from? They were occupying what we call modern day Alabama, Florida, Mississippi, and Louisiana. So he is now painting in 1847, native people in Louisiana. And this is what they would have looked like. Yes, they have copper color. You can see that they are neither, they're not white, but they're not black. They're definitely not Sub-Saharan African in, fe in feature. And these are the people that would have been the classic phenotype, similar to these people here, okay, during that time that represent the First Nation people. So when people like Dane Calloway, people like this lady, people like Waka, Waka Flocka claim that they are not, they don't have black ancestry, they don't have African ancestry, when you can clearly look at their phenotype, since they don't want to do the genetic testing, they can clearly look at the phenotype, we can see that they do not resemble these people. They resemble the people of West Africa. We all have mixed heritage. I have European heritage. I have Portuguese or Madeiran heritage. I know that not from DNA testing. I know that from just from ancestral research from the records. Okay, people in America have mixed heritage. They have a uh, 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 white in them. They they will have uh, what we call European in them. They probably have some Native American. But as we're going to see, it is not as much as what people like Dane Calloway are trying to make out. And why would we want to disconnect ourselves from the rich history, legacy, and tapestry of the African people on the continent of Africa? What would be the sense in doing that, from disconnecting yourself from the Nile Valley, from Timbuktu, and countless other examples that I could throw at you? So let's keep moving on. So, Let's look at some research now, okay? <clears throat> because the gentleman on the video started to talk about how the people, he said the Chinese people were mixing with the uh, Mayan people, sorry, the Omak people, and that's what gave rise 
to the people that we see today. Now, how does that make sense when the Native American people that I just showed were in America, in North America, and they wouldn't have come down to Mexico with the Olmecs and then all came right back up into America. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, so let's, let's look at the, some of the, the research, the actual research. So from this article, this is June 5th, 2019, closest known ancestor of today's Native Americans found in Siberia. So if you're claiming Native American ancestry, you're saying that your closest known ancestor came from Siberia. Okay, think about that. All right. Do we look like any of the people that are in Siberia or in China? No, we don't. So it says here. Uh, indigenous Americans who include Alaskan Natives, Canadian First Nations, and Native Americans descend from humans who cross an ancient land bridge connecting Siberia to Russia, right? That's what we, we already talked about that. Scientists are unclear when and where these early migrants moved from place to place. Two new studies shed light on this mystery and uncover the most closely related Native, Native American ancestor outside of North America. In the first study, a geneticist sequenced the whole genomes of 34 individuals who lived in certain Siberia, the land bridge Beringia, and Alaska from 600 to nearly 32,000 years ago. The oldest individuals in the sample, two men who lived in far northern Siberia, represent the earliest known humans from that part of the world. There are no direct traces of these men in any of the other groups the team surveyed, suggesting a culture likely died out about 20,000 years ago when the region became too cold. So, Elsewhere on the Eurasian continent, however, a group arose that would eventually move into Siberia, splinter, and cross Beringia into North America, the DNA analysis reveals. A woman known as Coloma I lived in North and Southeastern Siberia about 10,000 years ago, shares about two thirds, that's a lot, of her genome with living Native Americans. So, they're showing that there were several of these individuals. One of them, they can tell, didn't move anywhere else because their DNA doesn't match up with anyone else's. But this one particular woman, her DNA is resembles two-thirds of the Native American people that are found within the Americas today, showing that they came from, the, from Siberia. Okay? So... Based on the time it was taken for key mutation to pop up, the ancestors of today's North Americans splintered off from these ancient Siberian about 24,000 years ago, roughly matching up. So here's the DNA matching up with previous archaeological evidence and genetic evidence for when the peopling of the Americas occurred. Okay? Additional DNA evidence suggests a third wave of migrants, the Neo-Siberians, moved into Siberia from the south sometime after 10,000 years ago. These migrants mixed with the ancient Siberians, planting the genetic roots of many of the area's present day population. So they're talking about the Mongols and, and people like that who are now in Siberia, who are separate from the, the natives that are in Native America. So, why are we saying this? Again, the roots of the Native American people are in Asia, in this case Siberia, and we know what Siberian, we know what the people in Siberia look like, and it gives us an idea of why these people also look this way, and they clearly do not resemble people like this, clearly, okay, with the broad nose, okay, and the curly hair, and the thick lips. That is sub-Saharan -sub features. But let's keep going because the gentleman in the video will say, oh, it's those people that came down and mixed with the, with the, with the Omax. And so that's where you get the black people because it's saying that the Omax were black people and the Omax, those mixed people then would move into, back into America, which doesn't hold weight with the actual evidence. But let's keep going. Let's look at some more evidence. Here, reconstruction, reconstructing the population genetic history of the Caribbean feet um, of the Caribbean. The population genetic history of the Caribbean. Okay? So 
you can go online and find this exact article and I'm gonna jump down here to where the red box is okay it says interestingly where some insular populations such as Cubans and Puerto Ricans also showed a significant increase of African ancestry on the X chromosome okay the average difference in mainland populations was not significant overall we find evidence of a high Native American and to a lesser extent African female contributions in the Caribbean population. So one, they are separating the Native American from the African genetics. And two, they said that there was no significant difference from the mainland population, which was mostly Native American. They said, of course, there is some African contribution. Why? Because we know that African people were brought into those areas via slavery, but there is no significant difference from the Native American people in those population populations there. Okay. When you look at the actual article up the top, um, it gets into a lot of science, so we're not going to go deep into it, but it says here that um, talks about both Mesoamerican, okay, Mesoamerican and Andean Native American samples contain considerable amounts of European ancestry due to post-Columbian admixture, so meaning when the Spanish came over, a lot of the Spanish left people in those particular areas, okay. Um, they talk about the Mediterranean populations, the Caribbean Latinos, but you can see that through all of this, they don't speak about any African components until down here when they say that there's a distinct difference between the Native American people from South America, okay, and Africans. Again, separating the two, just like this particular article. But let's go on. Let's provide even more evidence, okay? <clears throat> I'm not sure why I had this particular um, image in there. I think this was a drawing, um, 1895. I think that should have been earlier. So this is 1847. This is 1895 from somebody who was exploring um, North America. So that should have been in, in earlier of my other pictures. So you can see here uh, 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 a Native American person with his pipe and clearly again he doesn't have Africoid features. This was from 1895, an actual like sketch drawing that someone has done. I'm very careful not to use artist conception. I only try to look at actual people that saw things with their eyes and then they drew things that represented um, people. Okay. So, but we were going to look at some more evidence. Okay. Now, Let's first, before I move to the final part of the um, presentation, let's address this, this, this idea that what Ivan Van Sertema said, that there was an African presence in the Americas before Columbus. He says they came before Columbus. Ivan Van Sertema, if you haven't read that book, you need to purchase this book. Ivan Van Sertema, Professor Dr. Ivan Van Sertema, a well-renowned uh, Pan-Africanist, a well-renowned researcher, uh, ethnographer, historian, okay? Lots of videos out there on YouTube. And he wrote the book, They Came Before Columbus, which talks about the presence of black Africans in South and Central America okay so we need to separate that idea because that's what the guy in the video at the end tried to do 
he tried to talk about the Omax and say that because the Omax were copper colored and that they mixed with the with the uh, you know with the people that were coming down from Asia the Chinese he said and those are the people that we would have seen in in the North America and that's why he can claim and people like uh, Chief Warhorse can claim that they're Native Americans all right now the people I've clearly showed that the people that Columbus saw in the Americas were not black they were not black African okay I also clearly showed that the evidence for people who have done lots of archaeological and historical research show that the people in the Americas were not black African features. I've showed that with artist conceptions based off of historical and archaeological research. I've also shown that with DNA evidence as well. Okay. However, the reality is, is that yes, there seems to be evidence that there were not only copper colored people, particularly in Central America, but particularly in the time of the, the Olmecs and the Mayans, but there might also have been dark skinned Africoid people in that particular area as well visiting. Okay? So but we have to we have to what remember this video is about setting the myths that people like Dan Calloway are saying that 98% of African Americans are Native American and they don't have any African ancestry, which is clearly not true at all. But we can celebrate the idea that within Central America, in particular here we're talking about the 5th century, so this particular mural, uh, mural comes from the Zat Zacatan um, murals in Guatemala, okay, which is Central America, okay, Lower Central America. And what it shows is some of the, the Mayan Olmec uh, people who are clearly brown copper skin. That's where the artist has painted them. And then this one is very unique because they're sitting down. It says the mural is depicting a 5th century royal family with visitors arriving at left and a woman appearing in a palace chamber besides an empty throne and musicians who are attending to the right. So it's almost like they've got special guests. Okay. And these guests look very, very dark skin. Okay. But this also gives rise to the fact that the majority of the people in that particular area, even though they were copper colored, they were not dark skin like this particular gentleman here. So for people to claim that the, the, the black Americans claim, came from native American people, the phenotype does not back that up. Okay. And but this is evidence that we, that supports the fact that there were copper colored people in the Central American regions. And this is not the only evidence because when you look at the Mayan mural, murals, murals of Bonampak, okay, this one is located in the temple of the murals. They also represented their people as copper colored, as brown skin, not as dark skin. <clears throat> not as necessarily Africoid features, but definitely as brown skin. And this is a, a uh, now, uh, this is a, what do you call it? A restored imagery of what those paintings, because when they found the paintings, they were quite degraded, okay? So this is what they look like after they've been restored and obviously, you know, redone by an artist and stuff like that. And you can see the brothers in there were very dark skin, the Omak brothers very brown skin okay um, however they did not have what we would typically call sub-saharan african features okay and so again i'm using this as evidence to say yes let's celebrate the fact that as ivan van sadema dr ivan van sadema says that they came before columbus there is an african presence 
in Central and South America before Columbus. Let's definitely celebrate that, but let's not use that as some sort of mythological and some sort of, you know, ridiculous falsehood to then disconnect ourselves and our ancestry of the majority of people in the Caribbean and in North America from Africa, because that's where the facts actually state that we come from. And let's look at some more of those facts. Okay. And I'm going to close because I'm sure I've been talking for quite some time. Let's close with this more science. The great migration and African-American genomic diversity. Okay. So they've looked at regional ancestry proportions. <coughs> Need some water. They've looked at regional ancestry proportions. Let's get a bit of water. regional ancestry proportions, okay? And they've looked at the cohorts for African, European, and Native American ancestries, okay? So, if you look at what they're saying here, they have the HRS and the SCCS, okay? So those are two different cohorts, top and bottom. And if you look, they have an imagery of the whole of the uh, United States here and then here is just the lower panhandle area where those tribes the Masoki tribes would have come from okay those particular areas here okay and you can see here let's look at the Native American these are percentages on the side <coughs> you can see here with a 68 percent confidence interval that the percentages for Native American amongst the African Americans is very low. It's there, but it's very low when compared to the African components. In fact, the Native American is lower than the European ancestry when compared to the African, sorry, when compared to the Native American. So Black Americans have more European ancestry than they do Native American ancestry according to the DNA. Okay? I know that for a fact of my own DNA research. And even in those areas that had strong First Nation peoples, like these areas, you can see that the farther south you go, the more the African influence was, which makes sense. Okay? The further west you go towards Louisiana and places like that, you're going to have more European influence, which makes sense, as well as more native influence, but the percentages are very small. Let's look at this. This is it's from the same article, and this presents it even better. The blue represents the inferred African, sorry, inferred ancestry. So if it's blue, that shows you that there is more African ancestry. If it's Europe, purple, it's European, and if it's orange, it's native. And that's the chromosome numbers, meaning how many chromosomes, there are 23 chromosomes that we have, so this is just 22 out of the 23, and how much matches up with what? And if you, they're looking, remember, they're looking at African people, and you can see clearly here that the majority of the chromosomes match closely with African ancestry and very small amounts match with native. So when these people like Dane Calloway, like Chief Warhorse Alan Gillum, not only does the historical evidence not back up what they're saying, not only does the the uh, cultural and you know uh, ethnographical evidence not back up what they're saying, the DNA evidence also does not back up what they're saying. We black people in the West are African people. And again, you have to question why would people be trying to separate themselves from that powerful legacy? I hope man, I have my own reasons, but it's something I'll share probably in another video. Okay?
Good, even more evidence. What people need to understand, and this is what the caller, I liked about what the caller was saying, is that when Spain was the chief uh, 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 colonizer in the Americas because Columbus was the one that came over first into the so-called New World, okay? And so it was Spain that held the Florida Panhandle first through work, the work of Ponce de Leon. It was Spain also that held uh, here what's called the Mexican Empire. So that went from what we call Central America, Mexico, all the way up to California. Okay. And Spain also held this part before they sold it to, to, to the French. Okay. Now, the Native American people that were here in all of these regions, okay, remember that before the onset of slavery from the British in Jamestown and after Jamestown and not even from Jamestown because the slaves didn't come until much, much um, further after that. But my point is, is that long before, remember, Columbus discovered in 1792, long before the, sorry, 1492, I would say 1792, long before the slaves were being bought from the British colonies in North in in the Caribbean to America in the British parts of the Americas there were black Africans being bought into the Americas by the Spanish and the French okay and we have evidence for that so when these no matter where they came from, where you came from in, in America, whether you come from the west of, of the Americas, the Midwest and the Northeast, or the South, your African ancestry is extremely high. See, this is in 70%, 80%, 90%, extremely high. Why? Because black African people were being brought over to the Americas from very, very early by the Spanish and then by the French. And we have proof for that. Look, here, the Afro-Mexicans Afro in the Mexican War of Independence. Here, 1821 was when the Spanish uh, conceded Mexico, okay, in 1821. So, Afro-Mexicans played an important role in the Mexican War of Independence, most prominently with insurgent leader Vincente Guerrero, who became commander-in-chief of the insurgency. So not only were the Africans playing a role in the independence in what we call Afro-Mexican, sorry, in the Mexican War against Spain, there were, they were so much there that they had a role to play in the independence, meaning they weren't just there as slaves. They actually became a big, huge part of the Mexican Spanish community. Okay, so they would have done a lot of mixing with the Mexican people, with the native people in that particular area. So for anyone to claim that the African people black people in America do not have African ancestry is beyond ridiculous because even during the time of when Mexico was part of Spain, there were Africans being bought as slaves in. And it says here, okay, it says it in this particular article here that um, even in French in 1717, the French controller decided to import African slaves into Louisiana. So we're talking about here now in the Louisiana Purchase. Okay, so not only were the African people here in New, in New Spain or what we later call um, in parts of Mexico, 
there were also African people being brought all into here from the French. So from their colonies in the Caribbean, African people were being brought into here and they were mixing with all of the native people in these different regions. In fact, the native people would take them as slaves, which is what this lady quickly tried to gloss over and said it was them that rescued the Africans when really many of the Native Americans would hold them also as slaves. So again, it's beyond ridiculous for them to claim that 98% of African Americans are Native American people and basically that we are not Africans. It doesn't make any sense. The evidence does not bear uh, claim to that. And I'm gonna finish off with this. This is from my own ancestry. So this is looking at records, okay? And I'm gonna show you why claims such as what um, uh, uh, Dane Calloway is making is not only untrue, but it's irresponsible. So if we look here at some of the, this is from ancestry.com, I'm doing my own research. This is a passenger and crew list, okay? For Ellis Island, all right? For one of my ancestors, this is probably my what, great, great, great grandfather, Al, Alrich Chap, Aldrich Chapman, all right? This isn't him, but I'm just showing you this part here where it says African black. So here on this column, they list the, the ethnicity of the people, okay? And you can see here it says Bermuda, which is where I originally, you know, my, my originally came from. Um, my, my ancestry comes from the, from St. Kitts, but they then came to Bermuda. So here at the bottom row is Aldrich Chapman, and he's listed as African black, okay? Because that's, he had that ancestry. He had Portuguese ancestry, but he had African ancestry also from St. Kitts where slaves were brought in, okay? Now, how is this connected to the, to the presentation? All right, you can see here it says race, okay? So that's what we're talking about, race and Aldrich. When they put a tick, just means follow along, it's like quotes, Aldrich was African black. My great-great-grandfather, Aldrich Chapman, this gentleman here, he had multiple brothers and sisters including himself, that moved to New York, okay? That moved to uh, New York. So here we're talking about, what's this, 1919. This is 1919 when this was done. He was 23 years old. So after that period of time, he would move to New York, okay? He came from Bermuda. So here he came from Bermuda into New York through Ellis Island, and that's where he resided him and many of his brothers and sisters. And they then would have children and their children would have children and my relatives are spread throughout the United States, particularly the, the Eastern seaboard, okay? So for Dane Calloway to say that 98% of African Americans, no matter where they came from, do not have African ancestry when clearly Many of the ancest ancestries of people came from the Caribbean, or they came from the French Louisiana, or they came from Spanish Mexico, where there were African people during those particular times that we talked about, is clearly not supported by the evidence and is irresponsible. Okay? So, the point of this whole video, this long video, was that you cannot separate or remove the African ancestry from black people in the United States. And indeed, why would you? Why would you want to disconnect from that contribution, from the rich history, the rich contribution, the rich challenge of African people have made in, the, in America, in North America, and in the, in the Caribbean, and of course, in Africa itself? There must be something behind that, and I'll talk about that in another video. 
I hope this video has been interesting. I've presented a lot of evidence and a lot of information. Please do comment below and make sure to subscribe to David Roots TV. Thank you. Peace and love.